I'd like to call the um, meeting to order from the Amherst Exempted Village Board of Education for our October regular meeting. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is up here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chairs roll. <laughs> <laughs> when you get back in your chair, <laughs> would you handle roll call for us, please? <laughs> Mrs. Snyder. Here. Mrs. Gillis. Here. Mr. Engel. Here. Mr. Yakabozi. Here. Mr. Zappa. Here. And now I'll take a recommendation to adopt the agenda as presented, including so any addendums. Okay. Mr. Yakabozi and Mr. Zappa. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Yakabozi. Aye. Mr. Zappa. Aye. Mrs. Gillis. Aye. Mr. Engel. Aye. Mrs. Snyder. Aye. And we're so excited to be on our first uh, stop on our tours for the rest of the school year. And we're going to start with our good news report with the principal. Yeah. Sorry, we're just gonna, can we cast to the screen, Mr. Molnar? Sure. You want to do yours? everybody we are this evening going to talk to you a little bit about some different programming that we've been having going on at the school and things that we've been working on um, probably for the past couple of years um, we've been talking a lot about the culture of our school what we really wanted to be about what we wanted to represent and then how we were going to put all of that into fruition to make it happen for our school and so um, we came up with a look um, our motto I would say we were talking about and our motto here at the school it's on the front of our doors and everything is one team one goal we really wanted to make sure that we were all a team and know that every single person in our building is part of the team and that everything that good that happens here or anything that happens at all is all because of everybody that's here. And so everybody's an active participant in our school. And so last year we started meeting and we started talking about, um, you know, what our goal was. What, what was our goal and how are we going to get, drive our goal and what we're going to do to implement that. And so we kind of came up together with our goal over here for Nord saying that our team will support each other and our community to be better today than we were yesterday in the pursuit of awesomeness. And that's what we talk to the students about and that's what we want them to know about. And so we have our BLT committee and we met all, the, met all through the year last year and then even during COVID, we um, got together and did some professional development uh, either virtually or spaced out throughout this whole media center, really working on making sure that our PBIS matrix had all the things that, that we felt like would be really important for our school and really help us be effective and then looked at a way that we were going to kind of use a program to implement all of the things that we've been talking about and so um, we adapted a program called PBIS Rewards and um, then we have all sorts of different committees that are doing different things we have a young men's empowerment group that we had last year that we'll have again this year we have a girls girls empowerment group this year we have a PBIS committee and uh, Jared Stevens our PE teacher and Beth Pazder, one of our intervention specialists, are the heads of our PBIS committee. And so they were just going to take a couple minutes and share a little bit about our program. But before they do that, this is our matrix. And it just defines all the different areas of the building. And then it tells our three pillars, which would be how to be safe, how to be respectful, and how to be ready to learn in each one of those places. And so that all of, everything that we do and anything that we're um, talking about with students, it always goes back to this. So this spring, um, our VLT committee um, came together and we found this program called PBIS Rewards. And it really houses all of the features that we need as a 
committee, as a school, as teachers, to um, analyze data regarding how we reward kids, if they need to be referred for anything, a check-in, check-out system. Um, there's an SEL check-in, and we even have a virtual store for kids to shop. So Mr. Stevens is gonna show you some, some of the goodies in that, in that tool that we have. So this is, I'm logged in as a teacher here. So you can see that today I, I awarded 226 points. And then the overall goal for me is 288. And that's just based upon number of students that I have in a day, number of possible points that I can give each student. So those really can be uh, individualized in between the teachers because not everyone has, you know, the same amount of kids they see in a day. Um, my are broke down into groups so I can see all of my classes. And then what we will start this Friday, we'll start our school store. And the kids will have a block in the morning to be able to go through and shop. And we have all the items. Um, another, another one of our uh, committee members, Sarah Harrell, spent a lot of time, you know, <laughs> inventorying all of this stuff and inputting it in there. And you know, so it, it ranges from candy to smaller items to lunches with teachers and rides other the police car. Yeah, rides That's in the police car with uh, Officer Layfield, and so we just have a number of different items that you know, hopefully motivate the kids to. And it, and all this is doing is replacing our store that we had last year. We had a store, in-person store, in our cafeteria on Fridays, and so this is just re re replacing that. And the, the students in Molly Atchison's unit are actually going to be filling the online orders, kind of like Amazon. And so the kids are going to shop on Friday, and everything will be counted, labeled, and delivered by the following Friday for every student in the school. I say, and just the <laughs> other important piece for us would be the data piece. Um, so. Like there are, you know, there are referrals, you know, everything for us goes back to that matrix, you know, so if a kid is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, you know, in the hallway or in a classroom, lunch recess, you know, there are referrals, minor and major. Um, so right now we're officially going to start this on November 1st. So right now we're still trying to get teachers into um, joining on to this because we have a calendar system that we kind of go through now. Um, so we're still kind of trying to collect data to um, you know, just to be able to see some of our, our areas uh, that we need improvement. So today you can see that overall in the building, 866 points were given throughout the day. Um, you can see what the categories they were given in, whether it be safe. Uh, for some reason this respectful is, that's the inactive, so that's the respectful yeah. and the ready to learn. Um, and then you can just, there's a lot of different graphs. There's, there's honestly too much to, to show right now. <laughs> There's a lot of different things we can go through. You can go through by student, you can go through by teacher, you can go through by what the referral is, you can go through what, you know, the positive points that they're getting. So there's a lot of different things and there's a lot of different places where we can take this, this program based off the information that we're gonna be getting from the teacher. So I think, uh, yeah. So we have that right there, the check and check out plans by tier. So Right now we have, what is that number, 517? Mm -hmm. 517 students sitting in tier one. And that's where, you know, that's where you want, like that's the program for 80% or more of your students. And then right now we're just starting with um, students moving into tier two where they need a little more support and we have check-in, check-out plans that we've designed for. There's one active plan and then we have two more starting tomorrow. And we've not yet had to move any student into a tier three plan. So. It's good data that we're getting, and any, every teacher actually is a check-in, check-out coach. So once you put the plan in the program, you can pull up that student if you have them, and you're giving them their ratings on how they did. You talk with that student and say, okay, well, how did you do today in class? And they get a rating of one to three. So that kind of moves them towards a point goal and an additional incentive if they need it. The other nice thing about this program is that the students are able to log in themselves mm -hmm. and so they can monitor themselves on the program mm -hmm. and so they are obviously if they're shopping through the store but they can see who awarded their points why they were receiving the points um, and then they can also see their referrals and what the what was going on with that and then parents can also log into this site as well and then what we hope to be able to do is to come back as a blt 
uh, where we're um, talking about all of our data and finding <coughs> our troubled spots where maybe we're seeing that a lot of referrals are happening at recess or at a, in a certain area at recess and we can track those kind of things and then see what kind of troubleshooting we need to do as a school to help fix and model appropriate behaviors. That's, that's our good news. That's our good news. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. And for coming to North. Thanks for hosting us. <laughs> Do we have anybody for a hearing of the public, Mr. Sayer? No, we do not. Okay. <clears throat> so we will move on to the Treasury report. Mrs. G. Over. Mr. Sayers, were we going to um, talk about our our guests this evening? Because oftentimes we do that before oh, the Treasurer's yeah. report. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, do, you want, do you want to do that now or do you want to do that as part of your report? Okay. 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 Just, just making sure. All right, um, so this evening, um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things. You have the spreadsheet in front of you that has the revenues and expenditures, both by month and year to date. Um, I'll let you look at this on your own next month when we, when we you know, don't have guests, or maybe even in a special meeting, we can go into greater detail about what drives these numbers. And recall, next month is the five-year forecast anyway. So um, we're doing well. Um, just to recap the, uh, the revenues and expenditures, we're doing well for the year. And recall that we have a couple of federal funding streams that we are able to alleviate some of our general fund expenditures and move into the federal expenditures. Um, excuse me, exactly. We are able to relieve some of our general fund expenditures um, and move them into the two federal funding streams. We can go into greater detail about that at another time. But I did want to go over um, one item in my recommendations before we get to the uh, treasurer's recommendations. Item F is a resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Lorain County Budget Commission. If you recall, the board has already approved this back in April. Um, but what we had was a library levy passage in the spring and the Lorain County Auditor's Office has just sent in revised tax rates to include that 0.73 mil levy. And because we are the taxing authority, those items have to be approved by our board and then approved to the Lorain County um, Auditor's Office. So um, were there any questions about that item before we get to the recommendations? Okay. Item eight, the recommendations. Um, a and B are both standard items, approval of the prior month's minutes and the financial reports for the month of September. Item C, our increase in appropriations. Um, recall that the board approves permanent appropriations before the end of September. These are changes. The first one <clears throat> is the library bond retirement fund that was previously appropriated, not at all and we are increasing it to over $511,000. That library um, bond retirement fund, we will be paying the debt service as the taxing authority. We will be paying the debt service on behalf of the library. Um, and that first $511,000 that goes in there is premium that was built into the pricing structure of the bond issue. I won't bore you with any further detail on that. The library construction fund is a 004 fund, uh, like a local building fund. And as far as I understand, we will be receiving the, the $5 million, the face amount of their bond issue um, on the 28th, I believe, of the month, 29th of the month, and then immediately turning around and sending that $5 million over to the library. They will manage the construction fund themselves at that point. So all we will be holding then is the bond premium and then we will be collecting tax revenue for the for the calendar year 2020 and um, for 15 more years then. Uh, and then the OCCRRA, um, I think Mrs. Walker could tell you exactly what that acronym stands for. Um, let's suffice it to say that it is a state um, grant for the preschool. Um, we have qualified for a payment of or reimbursement of $21,812 and um, 
Ms. Engel at Powers and Mrs. Walker are going to spend that $21,812 before the end of December. So um, item D then is a fund to fund transfer um, from the general fund over to our athletic fund um, due to this environment that we are in. Um, there have been greatly diminished um, gate receipts and opportunities for revenue. Um, so that is the reason for that. Item E is an after the fact. I think we have, we have spoken about those in the past a number of times. Item F is what we just talked about, the tax rates needing to be revised. I will certify those to the county auditor then when we return in the morning. And item G are don donations. Any questions? Can you elaborate on the donations for us, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Mrs. Snyder. I, t I just wanted to follow up. Uh, as the board is aware, we're very fortunate that we have a number of folks in our uh, community that are very generous in a number of ways. And uh, normally, this time of year, Slimans hosts the Jeep Jam as a way of a neat kind of community event, as well as generating money for our various programs. and. Uh, Slimans, even though we didn't have a Jeep Jam this year, you know, due to the you know, requirements and restrictions and those types of things with COVID, uh, in lieu of the Jeep Jam, still made some donations uh, to uh, not only a couple of school groups here, which you see on the agenda, but I also wanted to mention that they donated uh, nearly $2,000 to the uh, Athletic Booster Club as well. So uh, even though uh, you see a donation here for $200, uh, your generosity goes far beyond uh, what you see here on the agenda uh, through donations to our booster group. So I did, I did want to uh, uh, make note of that as well. So I have a question. In regards to the $50,000 for the athletic fund, do we think this is going to be a one-time transfer this year, or do we see this happening again at the second half of the year for the sports since the gate receipts for winter sports and spring sports will probably be non-existent as well. What we're hopeful, uh, we've talked about this with, with Casey and based on where we're at now <coughs> and what we're projecting moving forward, uh, we're anticipating that this should carry us through the year, through the 2020-21 school year. Any other questions? Hearing none, um, I'll take a motion for Treasurer's Recommendations 8A through G. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Mr. Engel? Aye. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Yakabozi? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mrs. Snyder? <coughs> Aye. Moving on to the superintendent's report, Mr. Sayers. Uh, thank you again, Mrs. Snyder. Uh, just three items here uh, before I turn it over to uh, Mr. Molnar. Uh, first of all, I too wanted to thank uh, Ms. Giovinazzo and her staff for hosting us here this evening. It's always great to be able to uh, get out to the buildings and you know, this space here is a product of a partnership with the Nord PTO. And I think it was what, two summers ago, uh, yes. we were able to do some things in this space. And I think you would agree a very, very uh, nice space for our students and I certainly would encourage the board after the meeting uh, Please feel free to meander about the building check things out uh, if you look out the windows over on this side You'll notice that all the modulars are now gone and uh, grass seed has been planted and then back towards the back uh, Of course that's been turned into parking. So the building looks great and again at your uh, at your leisure, please feel free to uh, make your way through the building. I think uh, Ms. Giovinazzo will be around as well and certainly can answer any questions you may have. Uh, second item I had is just wanted to share that we are kind of into, I guess it's phase two of our e-campus, on-campus uh, program that we have in place this year. And we've been off to a great start here these first six weeks of school, but now we are moving into essentially the second opening of school uh, as we look at this trimester the next trimester for the junior high and the high school will start on I think it's November uh, the 18th uh, so we have a window of time that's open now uh, October the 12th through October the 26th where junior high and high school families are making decisions and choices about on campus versus e-campus if they want to change now's the time to make those decisions 
uh, so that we can make those plans and implement uh, uh, prior to November 18th. Obviously, staffing considerations, uh, schedule considerations, all types of things uh, that go into this. So we're in the midst of that process, and we thought that this would also be a good time to ask for feedback uh, from our Nord and Powers parents. Uh, we initially, the commitment was uh, for a semester uh, that we go through the Christmas uh, vacation. And while we were communicating with our junior high and high school students, we thought because of the interest we've had, uh, questions we're getting about returning to on campus, when can that happen, those types of things, that this would be a good opportunity to essentially do another survey uh, for our K-5 families uh, to get an idea, you know, how many are looking to go from e-campus, on-campus, on-campus to e-campus, maybe undecided at this point. Uh, so we're giving that opportunity through October the 26th. Again, that's a survey that's not a final decision at this point, but it really gives us some good feedback uh, in terms of planning uh, and what that next uh, phase looks like there. Uh, for again our e-campus and on-campus program and, and again as we mentioned at the outset uh, we want to be flexible uh, we want to give families uh, choices to do uh, what they think is best for their uh, for their children so uh, we're moving that process for, uh, forward and certainly we'll keep the board uh, updated uh, with that uh, with that process but I did want the board to know that we're now into that planning stage essentially it's like we were talking at our principals meeting the other day it's like starting school all over again in, in that, that process. And then the last thing I had just real quick I wanted to mention is the board is aware typically November is the month where we have a work session. And uh, for convenience reasons, we normally have that in Columbus uh, because we're at the Ohio School Board's uh, State Capital Conference. We're down there for that conference. So typically we have that work session there where we review and take a look at our goals and how we're doing with our district goals. And uh, we still wanna have that work session and, and talking with Mrs. Knight, we think that would be a good thing. Difference being, obviously, we would do it in Amherst this year. We're not going to be attending that uh, state uh, school board's uh, conference. So um, looking at some dates, uh, working with the rest of the administrative team, trying to find out dates where everyone's available that first week in November. And once we have that information, I'll uh, be in touch with uh, Valerie and hopefully we can get a get a date that works and accommodates everybody's schedule. So that uh, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Mr. Molnar? All right. Uh, might I come up? No, come All on right, up. Thank you. <clears throat> so I get the uh, honor and really privilege of uh, sharing two really special items with the board and the community tonight. Uh, both revolving around military families. Uh, the first one being, uh, I'm sure many of you saw uh, recently that uh, this fall, Amherst, uh, all four schools were awarded the Purple Star Awards. And those are awards given by the state of Ohio to schools specifically who, through the district, through the school, really have evidence of showing support for military families. Uh, and so this all started about a year ago, last summer, when I met with one of our military parents, Elizabeth Fott, who came to meet with me and discuss, you know, she really wanted to see Amherst uh, get the rec recognition they deserve for supporting military families, uh, not only uh, through the district, through our website and all the links we have there, but also through what's happening in each building. So uh, I enlisted the help of Amanda Sears, our technology education <laughs> specialist, who uh, I knew through the course of the year would be the one person who would be involved in a lot of these activities and sessions and you know uh, recording them and taking pictures on so I asked her if she wouldn't mind uh, taking this on to really just kind of document because again receiving this award you have to have evidence that you are in fact each school doing this uh, and so uh, I'm gonna have Amanda Sears come up and join me uh, to kind of share I thought I, she would highlight just a few things that she submitted because she submitted four different really presentations to the Department of Education for them to review and we were forced enough again through all her work and the school's work to get those awards and they, those awards are for three years so three years from now I'm sure we will need to submit evidence again of an update of what we're doing for military families and so I'm going to turn it over to Amanda just to share a few items um, I'll get out of the way so you can see uh, just a few things that, that she submitted for each building and really what and this is just a, just a little quick snapshot of a few things that the buildings are doing to support military families. 
Um, first of all, it, I think we do well together nicely, but um, I, it, it, I was honored to do this because my father is a Vietnam veteran. So this was like right up my alley and the littlest thing I could do to help our veterans and military is, is beyond what I could actually do for anybody. But um, it's actually, we started because Elizabeth fought came to talk to me. We've been doing these virtual field trips across the district. I don't know if you guys have seen it. We've done Yellowstone. We went to Antarctica. Well, she had mentioned that Sergeant Fought had uh, internet service in Kuwait. And I was like, this is perfect. We can actually get our kids to go to Kuwait virtually, tie in a whole history lesson on Kuwait and a geography lesson. And not only that, be able to include our families. And, and the Fought family was actually able to come to each one of those virtual field trips. And then she had mentioned to me, and then it just kind of spiraled into us applying for all four schools. Because I always tease, like, I came from a family of four, and I have five kids. So we wanted all the milk to be poured even. So everybody got, <laughs> we, I made sure everybody got their own slideshow. But each school really is doing wonderful things. And I'm so happy that we're able to highlight the things that we are doing for our military. So this is our website, and it's been on there. And it has all the directory links for any of our military families. It has all the resources and all the family support. So that's on our website all the time. And the next slide, um, this is at the high school with Mr. Tellier. He has made a huge deal of military signing day. And I thought this was really cool because anytime a student athlete gets a scholarship, they have a signing day for the scholarship. And now we've implemented where if you're signing up to enlist in the military, they have a military signing day as well. So the military representatives come and they sign up for the military and it's just like the athletic scholarship. So it's just as much of an honor to go into the military as it is for those academic and athletic scholarships. This is one of my favorite things. We had these signs made, and I just think it's a small token to represent our military families that when you pull up for an assembly, or when you come in to pick up your kid, you get prime parking spots in all of our <laughs> buildings. So we have these, the ones on the right, those are going up, they're working on putting the posts in, and then the signs will go up. But I thought it was so cool because Mr. Tellier took it a step further and enlisted the steel arts students. And each one of the spots now is going to have, and this is already at steel, so I've heard from a little bird that they're going to travel to all the different schools and do emulate that same stencil to have that veteran parking spot. And they put two spots at the high school, and I'm not sure how many spots will get the other ones, but that'll be at all the different schools. This was in um, Amherst Junior High. This is Mrs. Galloway's class. Mrs. Galloway has a coffee shop, and every Friday they deliver sodas and coffee. And each year they pick a, um, a group to donate that coffee shop money, and the kids picked the Valor Home, which is in Lorraine, and it provides transitional housing to homeless male veterans in Lorraine County. So we're still taking care of our military and our veterans, even after retirement. And then this was, what well, we were talking about the field trip, this was so cool because again, this is the farthest we've traveled. Antarctica was far, but Kuwait was even farther. And we were able to talk to uh, Sergeant Fought in live time in Kuwait. And I think it was like 10 in the morning our time, but what time was it for you? It was like getting dark, right? Yeah, about uh, seven o'clock, six o'clock. Yeah, it was just so interesting. And just for the kids to be able to understand, we did a whole lesson beforehand a geographical lesson and talked about the area of Kuwait and then the kids prepared questions and they were able then to deep even deeper research and a more meaningful understanding of what life in Kuwait is like so it was a really cool thing and then the family was able to come and watch and it was even just cute taking the family pictures and all of the kids and I think this is really nice too tying in the families of our community with the students in our community and just to see that interaction and being able to bring the families in and actually see like yeah you know his father is in Kuwait and that's a really powerful thing that that the kids are going through and then the family's going through but what a joyous time too that we were able to experience that with the kids and we were able to do that at powers all, all of your kids did one yeah and all the different classes then in Mrs. Bartek's class she took it a step further and they shipped Oreos trail mix granola bars and mints all the way to Kuwait and Iraq to support the troops overseas so they then took that as a learning lesson and then the kids brought in all these items and then were able to donate those items overseas because Mrs. Bartek's son's in the military as well so they kind of partnered off of that field trip to Kuwait and then donated the items overseas and then after we did the Powers virtual field trip Mrs. Tellier had all of her students write letters to the different uh what did it get sent to you yeah we did, so we I have. think we mailed this right before 
like I think this was almost right before COVID, but then they sent, we packaged all the letters and then were able to pass them out? Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. And that was in Powers. So can everyone give Amanda a uh, round of applause? <laughs> you know, just for all her work. And I just uh, I do want to read this slide real quick. This is just from Elizabeth Vaught, just kind of a thank you to uh, Amber Schools. And again, it really, really is, it goes down to the teacher level, right? It goes down to the teacher level and the, and the A level, the principal level, more than it is, of course, up here with Steve and I, right? So, so uh, kudos to everyone um, in all the buildings who just, again, support military families. And at this time, um, again, again, a big thank you to the Fott family and also Amanda for all her work. But this time I would like to have uh, Sergeant Joseph Fott and Elizabeth Fott come up here for a moment. Um, as they come up, you know, S Sergeant Joseph Fott, he's been in the military for 23 years, platoon sergeant, Alpha Company. And Elizabeth Fott, uh, she's actually also um, highlighted on her website on the military page because she was voted 2018 Armed Forces Insurance Ohio National Guard Military Spouse of the Year. <laughs> so, so we, <laughs> wonderful you know again we, we do always support uh, the military go overseas but it is so important to highlight the spouses and the children and the families that those who are uh, every day every minute supporting our, 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 our servicemen and women overseas so again thank you for, for doing that um, Joe would you mind sharing some moment thank you for everyone's time would you mind sharing some moment of just your recent tours you just came back and were was highlighted on Channel 19 news <laughs> and also Fox 8, think, Fox 8 so um, yeah, I was gone uh, from last, the end of June of 2019 till about two weeks ago. <laughs> Finally made it back. So I served in Kuwait and Iraq for a short term also before the COVID came up there too. And slowed every, the whole world down, obviously. But uh, I, it was just awesome being able to see all the students and get to interact with them. and. The care packages teachers sent, because I think I got actually another care package from another teacher as well. And the letters from the kids are always so awesome to get. So, it, you know, please continue to do that. Even though I'm not there, we can always get you guys addresses to get other people. And we've had just nothing but good things to say about Amherst schools since we came here. Our teachers have always understood, especially when you know the kids' dads you know take off, and they might have that you know drawing. I think the first one we had was one of the kids drawing a, a, a little stick figure with a gun in class, which is, <laughs> I had to talk like, okay, <laughs> I know dad's gone, we can't do that in school, but you know. <laughs> but all of those things are, I mean, it means a lot to us because we've always felt supported at Amherst and we're, we're super excited that you guys were able to get the Purple Star Award. So congratulations to you. And uh, we just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you to all the schools and the school board for that, all the uh, work you guys have done for us. So while I was overseas, uh, up in Iraq, we had flags flown. So the first one we have is for the school board. Oh, wow. We'd like to come on up here. All right. <laughs> thank you. So this, this flag was flown over Camp Taji, Iraq. So we wanted to present that to you guys as a thank you. Great. And did you have a, a nephew or somebody over there? Nope. Okay. I did not. Um, you don't tell me. Oh, board. really? Like, Are you sure? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Actually, Jeremy Nider. Jeremy, yeah, he was a favorite. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> really? There you go. Thank you for telling me about the best part. Oh my goodness! Oh, well, yeah, because he just came home too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he came home a couple, a little bit earlier. Yeah. He had a baby. So yeah. Great. Right. Really <laughs> so and then we also have uh, the kids. You guys want to come up? We'll okay. All right. Thank so you. can we have the principals also come up? Uh, actually, uh, Corey. Uh, Angle, the assistant principal from Powers is here, and then uh, Andrew Gibson from AJH, and of course, Joe Zobonazzo from here in uh, so Joe, would you person. explain what we also have for all the principals as well? And we also, uh, as well as uh, for the school board, we also flew flags, flags in Camp Taji, Iraq also, for each of the, the different schools the kids went to. So the first one is for Powers. So girls going to give it. Thank you, we appreciate it. <laughs> Here's one for Nord as well. Also, 
also for the junior high. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so again, on behalf of our family and, and I know all the other veterans and military service members and go to Amherst, you know, it was very much appreciated, all your work you guys do, and it, it's uh, extremely heartwarm, heartwarming to know that we're always supported along every step and every different school that children go to. So keep up the good work, and thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Well, I mean, we're with everybody. Yeah, you're not done yet, kiddos. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank you so much. My report. Wow, my favorite overachiever. Top notch tonight, Mike. That's a tough one to find. I was going to say, next time, let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 It's all you. Well, <laughs> well, but in the interest of you know, talking about how Amherst does so much to support our families and communities, I just have two things that I wanted to touch on. Um, on our Amherst schools, on the main splash page on our um, website, there is a um, announcement from Jill Mayork, our social worker, uh, about a second harvest delivery that's coming in on October 22nd. And pickup will be at Steel um, between 11.30 and 1.30. And there's a link actually on the website with that to RSVP because with everything going on and with COVID, it's just we need to know when people are coming in and, and how much food we're gonna need. So that way it's not gonna set too long. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about that's also on the webpage is our district was selected by the Ohio Department of Education and the Office for Exceptional Children for a parent survey regarding our uh, services for students with special needs in the district. And so that first email went out on Friday asking parents to provide the Office for Exceptional Children with input on, on how we're doing. And then they will share that information with us. That's part of our annual special education profile that is put together every year. Um, so those are just two two kind of big things going on in the world of student services right now. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? I guess we didn't ask many questions for Mike either. <laughs> Sarah funny. was trying to get him to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Engel. Uh, sure. JBS. <clears throat> um, the big focus right now is to get the levy passed on the ballot, which I'm sure several of you have already voted for since so voting has begun. Uh, just a reminder that it is a 0 .66, 0 0.66 mil additional levy, which is going to cost you about, it's going to cost you $23.10 for 10 years on the valuation of a $100,000 home. I, I hope that you kind of, I sent you the link, I believe I sent it off to all of you, correct? One might have bounced back, you might have bounced back. <laughs> sent you the links that you can go on there and read all about that from that perspective. Was that the video that you sent us? I did. <laughs> mine would not open. It had an error message or something. So I can do a special link. Okay. <laughs> but if you go to the JBS Facebook page or the Levy page, you'll be able to find okay. all that information okay. there because um, our strategy is certainly a little bit different this year than it has been in the past in how we're campaigning for this. Uh, a lot of it is all online for social media to attract those people who need that way. Right here. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's some mixed emotions about that on the board. Um, we haven't spent a lot of money on signage. Minimal signage will be out this year. We've actually asked the community who have electronic billboards who support the JBS to put those messages up here in the next couple of weeks as voting has begun. So you might see that as you're driving by. So if any of you know of a business that would have an electronic billboard, if you kind of like myself or if you wanted to let the superintendent know, uh, that would be great as well uh, because I know the uh, communications person has been contacting Dr. Faircloth has been doing almost um, <coughs> some kind of meeting with groups via Zoom to talk about that. So if anybody knows of any organization that would like to have a conversation about the JVS levy, they can certainly contact uh, the, off the office of the JVS and they will arrange that time to, to do that meeting as well. Um, the fun stuff at the JVS, like Teresa always wants to know about. <laughs> Uh, of course, there is no craft show, which normally happens in October. None of those fun things are happening. So, um, we have had one reported case of COVID at the JVS to date. But the hybrid model of going to school, of going to school to do labs and <coughs> classes like that have worked out very well. We've had no issues with that. Um, so, do you have any questions? Wait a minute. Are you telling me we're not having any cookies? And you will probably not have any. Oh. I'm not. They haven't ruled that out completely because that is a pre-sale and baked in box there. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether they're going to have the hours to accomplish the number of cookies that they would normally make. May. Not. The point that sale will probably happen okay. because that's. Yeah, so we will. Okay. But it hasn't been ruled whether the cookies. It's the man hours of people being in lab to be able to do that. Because you know, they would spend right. weeks doing that. Right. And they're only there a couple of days of being now to do that. So I highly doubt that the cookie sales will happen. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> You've been recording. I, mean, yeah, I, I know. I'm on, that's just our news. <laughs> so I don't know that for sure. But the craft show, which is normally we're gearing up for um, here within the 18th this coming weekend. So, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to personnel recommendations, Mr. Sayers. <coughs> yes, thank you very much. And uh, I know the board has had an opportunity to uh, review the agenda and look over the various items. And as you see, many of these items are fairly standard for, for this time of year, uh, recommendation of a number of contracts, uh, substitute to staff, uh, various uh, leave recommendations. I did want to highlight uh, a couple of items if I could. Item P is a recommendation to adjust our substitute uh, uh, teacher rate of pay uh, to $100 a day and $115 for retired Amherst teachers. This would represent an increase uh, pending your approval, would represent, uh, um, represent an increase of $5 per day. And again, this is just to stay competitive as we kind of survey what's happening, you know, throughout the county with other districts. If this was an adjustment we thought, uh, especially this year, uh, and the importance of making sure we have a pool of substitute teachers, uh, wanted to be aware of the rationale for that change uh, as we look, uh, you know, to the remainder of the 2020-21 school year and making sure we have an adequate number of teachers. And then Q is an MOU. This was a, a kind of an unusual situation that developed this year. More so than most years, we hired a number of new teachers, uh, especially late in the summer. And uh, so what this represents is a challenge in making sure we have enough mentors to mentor our new teachers. And we had a situation this year where we didn't have enough mentors to to match up one-to-one -one with all of our new teachers. So this is an MOU that Mike uh, worked uh, very closely with Lisa Shank and the Amherst Teachers Association that it kind of adjusts or modifies our language for this year to allow a mentor to work with more than one mentee or new teacher. So again, that's, it was a little bit uh, out of the ordinary this year. One of our focus uh, points as we look to planning for next year is to expand our pool of mentors so that we can kind of get back to one mentor 
for one new teacher. But that is a, an adjustment for this year. And uh, thank you to Mike uh, for his work with the Amherst Teacher Association. And then uh, just some other items there, uh, again, that you're used to seeing on, on the agenda in, in regards to personnel. And with that, would like to recommend approval of items 11A through mm -hmm. 11U. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Iacobosi? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mrs. Zappa? Aye. Mrs. Snyder? Aye. <coughs> and then we'll move on to educational recommendations. Yes, just one item here, and this is a recommendation to approve the site agreements. Again, this is a standard agreement that the Ohio High School Athletic Association requires us to. Uh, to enter into when we host a, a postseason tournament game, would like to recommend approval of item 12A. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Engel? Aye. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Yakposi? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mrs. Snyder? Aye. Business recommendations, please. Yes, thank you. Just uh, three items here. First item is an agreement. You probably recognize this from previous years, an agreement with Great Midwest Sports. They're the uh, uh, company that does the fall and winter sports schedules that you see, uh, you know, the posters that you see in buildings and around town, that type of thing. And they do those schedules and it's paid for with advertising. And then there's revenue that goes back to the athletic department. That's the agreement for that. And then item B is, is a uh, recommendation to enter into agreements with Vermilion and Amherst schools for the, or excuse me, uh, Vermilion and Oberlin schools uh, for the transportation of students. Again, we just uh, try to work together to help one another out when it comes to transportation of students. For example, I know there's been cases in the past where our JVS bus is going right through the Oberlin on the way to JVS, it makes sense for us to stop by and pick up some of their students if we're able to do that. Uh, so Amy's able to work out all that uh, billing and paperwork, but this is just a good thing when you have districts working together to, to help one another out. Similar to what we did this year with Vermillion in the substitute bus driver. And, and that, uh, I know individual has been a tremendous uh, help for us over these first six weeks of school. And then the last item, is in agreement with Huddle uh, Incorporated. And this has kind of grown out of our live streaming. <laughs> Things are changing. And with the limits in terms of how many people can attend athletic events, whether it be outside or indoors, uh, folks are looking at new and different ways of doing things. And what this will do is this will provide us with a camera that will be mounted in the gymnasium that will obviously help us with volleyball, boys basketball, girls basketball, wrestling, other events that we have in the gymnasium and really assist us, provide us with the hardware and software that we need uh, to live stream. And uh, we're actually having conversations internally within our district in terms of how we can expand uh, the number of events and activities and different programs, how we can expand the number of things that we're live streaming and I know the Southwest Conference is also talking about live, live streaming as a league and what that looks like. And again, uh, this is all kind of grown out of what we're going through uh, this year with the, with the COVID situation. So uh, at this point, we'd like to recommend items 13A through 13C. So moved. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. Mr. Yakabozi? Aye. Mrs. Snyder? Aye. I don't see a need for executive session. No? All right, so we will take a motion to adjourn. So we'll move. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Yakabozi? Aye. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mrs. Snyder? Aye.